Jesus and Brother Robbie Hawkins. A great big hand as he comes to bring you down. Matthew chapter 
chapter 21, verse 42. No, I'm sorry. I got the wrong place. I'm sorry. 18. Matthew 21 and 18. About messed up there, man. I've done that once over here. Read the wrong scripture. I just went ahead and preached what God gave me. Right there and there. You ever done that? No, you should have. You ain't going to preach it until you've done that. Man. Amen. Sometimes God's got something he wants to say. Amen. Amen. Matthew 21 and 18. It says, Now in the morning, as he returned unto the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth, for forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Now I'm going over to the book of John right fast. John chapter 15. I'm trying to hurry now reading these scriptures. Some of y'all have saw the word you've read all week. Amen. Come on. I'm right. Amen. Matthew chapter 15 verse 1. John. John. God, really. John chapter 15, verse 1. How about they pray for me? It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can it except it abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. I'm going over to Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to try to tie all this in together here. Have your way, Jesus. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, but the fruit, somebody say the fruit. The fruit. Of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affliction with the aff affection of and lust. And if ye live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I want to preach to you tonight on this thought. Now I want you to look over at your neighbor that way you don't think I'm talking to you. And I want you to ask your neighbor, do you have any fruit on your tree? Do you have any fruit on your tree? Now, now I want to say this. I want to, I want to say this. I want to say this right out, of the, right out of the shoot. I'm telling you right now, if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, you cannot produce the fruits of the Spirit. Come on. That's just plain and simple. If you do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you cannot produce the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Now you might say, well, I love this and I love that. But there's more to it than just love. Amen. Now wouldn't the, how many here likes fruit? How many here likes fruit? Amen. Amen. But look, I want you to know something. We all like different types of fruit. Some of us like apples. Some of us like oranges, some of us like grapes and grapefruit and kiwi and all these things. We like this fruit. Uh, but fruit is costly, amen. Fruit is very costly. But wouldn't it be nice if we could go to the grocery store, Brother Sambo, and buy one fruit. And when we cut it up and we had all the fruit taste of every fruit we like. Come on, does that make sense to you? Wouldn't it be nice if you could go to the store and per se buy a watermelon and cut that watermelon open and have the taste of an apple or a taste of an orange or the taste of grapes? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be nice if we could taste all the fruit in one fruit? 
Now the Bible don't say that we have the fruits of the Spirit, but it says we have the fruit of the Spirit. And I want you to know tonight that every fruit, every fruit of the Spirit is found in one fruit. If you cut love open, you will find the seeds of long suffering. You will find the seeds of tempest and meekness and kindness. Don't tell me you love me and then be unkind to me. It's kind of like them folks that speak in tongues at church, but they can't speak a word to you at Walmart. She was guilty. She was caught with her hand in the cooking. 
baby jar. Yeah. She was caught in the very act of adultery. Yeah. But where was the men that she was caught with? Oh. Where was the man it takes to to commit adultery? Yeah. Where was the man at? Yeah. See, we got a problem because some folks will overlook. Yeah. Mom. I know a lot of pastors that overlook a tie pain. Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I know a lot of pastors that overlook a good tie pain. Yeah. Oh, leave him alone. He pays three hundred dollars a month in ties. Come on, bring it on. Help us, Lord. Let me tell you something. If you pay ties good, if you live like hell, you might as well keep your money. Yeah. What are you talking about? I hope I don't get you in trouble. But I'm telling you right now, if you put your money in the offering and you don't love your brother, you might as well keep your money. I'm not going to buy your way to heaven. You cannot buy a seed in heaven with your earthly possessions. The only way that you can to heaven is to die in a liquid grave in the name of Jesus and be raised in the likeness of his resurrection and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, now I won't say I won't take my time to preach this now but I want you to look here. Fruit is a seasonal thing. Some of y'all go to Walmart and you buy an orange and you think that they picked it Monday, shipped it Tuesday, and you got it on Thursday. Come on, come on. That fruit is stored up in a storehouse somewhere, and when they need it, they ship it. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna say this. You might not like it, but I'm gonna say it. Amen. There's times in our life as a Christian that we will not produce fruit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Go ahead. Why would a tree not produce fruit? Because it says in the word that every tree that bringeth not forth fruit, he purgeth it. Yes. But you don't like it when the Holy Ghost comes along and cuts you off a little bit. You don't like it when the power of God is coming down and you're shouting all over the place. But you've been pruned. Amen. That you might bring forth more fruit. I want to know which one of you would buy an apple tree and plant it just to get one harvest from it. You'd never buy an apple tree and pay big money for it to plant it and work on it and dig around it and baby it for it to produce one harvest of apples. Huh? You got people in the church, they produce just a little bit of fruit and then they think they're done. But the word says, he would that your fruit remain.
church and every summer well the time of harvest uh, we would climb that tree and we would get I'm talking about apples that big and they oh you can ask my wife she's a, she's a, she loves apples amen she loved uh, and apples were so good but there came a time of season that that tree stopped producing fruit So you know what we did? We trimmed the tree. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. Hold on now. Come on. The next summer, it produced pretty good apples. You beat them apples. You know what I'm talking about. It produced pretty good apples. And my uh, and, and some I ain't gonna say no name, but some of my family said, "Oh, we saved the apple tree because it produced a little bit more apples." But the following summer, you know what we had to do? We had to cut it down because it stopped producing fruit. And when a fruit tree stops producing fruit, do you understand what happens to it? It begins to die. Oh, I feel a Holy Ghost. That's why we got so many dead people in the church today because they're not producing anything. If we're not producing any fruit, then Jesus has nothing to come along and taste of. Huh? Well, preacher, I'll be all right just like I am. Just give me a few months and I'll be okay. But the Bible said when Jesus seen the fig tree in the way. Oh, my God. There's some people just in the way. Huh? He come up to it. Now, he had the leaves on it. Jesus was not a dummy. He knew what a fig tree was. He spoke it into existence in the beginning. So he knew what a fig tree was. And he looked at that tree. And that tree should have had figs on it. But when he ran up underneath it, he could find no figs to eat. Do you have any fruit on your tree? Jesus discovers that this tree has no fruit. And he did not say, let's give it a week. I'll come back. But the Bible says that he cursed that tree. And right then, it said presently, right then, that tree withered and died. Why? Because it was never going to be able to produce the fruit that it was supposed to produce. You got a lot of people that is an apple tree and they're trying to produce oranges. You got a lot of folks that is a grapevine and they're trying to produce watermelons. I'm going to tell you something. You'll never go up to an apple tree and pick you an orange. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, I, I ran into a pastor the other day. And she said, would you help me baptize? I said, well, how do you baptize? She said, oh, we cover everything. We baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus Christ. That way we get it all. Come on, Come on brother. I said, let me show you a shortcut to all that. <laughs> Matthew 28 19 was fulfilled in Acts 2 38. But you know what she was doing? She was an apple tree, but she was trying to produce oranges. Oh, yeah. You, if you was blind, I might be able to fool you, but even a child knows the difference between an apple and an orange. And let me tell you what happens when you get a bunch of fruit together. You can take a whole basket of fruit. I've seen this happen over Christmas. Look here. They took a fruit. They made a fruit basket. And they put grapes in the bottom of it. And oh, it was so pretty. I'm telling you, it just looks so good, you know. We give it to one of the elders in the church, and they're just so happy about it. 
But when I delivered the fruit basket, I looked at the, 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 the grapes and they had hair growing on them. What happens with with, with 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 fruit? Fruit comes with a fungus on it. That's why they tell you to wash it before you eat it. Uh -huh. But look here, what happened to that fruit basket? Those grapes, the the, the, the parasite that was on those grapes, it spread. It spread to the apple, to the orange, and to the nuts. Oh yeah. It spread all over the fruit basket until the fruit had to be thrown away. Why? Because it had a parasite. I want you to know tonight, you better search your heart and make sure you ain't got a parasite living on the inside. You know what a parasite does? It sucks the nutrition. Oh yeah, it sucks the the, the, the the nutrition out of the fruit. You got folks sitting right in the church that will suck every bit of spirit they can. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they'll suck every bit of spirit they can out of you. They hate it if you have a good day. They'll go home and post on Facebook that you shouted tonight, but you don't live right. Come on. Come on. It's a parasite in the kingdom of God. Right. Oh, preacher. Come on, preacher. Oh. Come on. Judas was a parasite among the twelve. And Jesus tried to change him, but his heart had raw in it. What you talking about, preacher? I'm telling you tonight, if you have a parasite on the inside of you, you need to wash yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that we wash ourselves with the water of the Word. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of y'all need to go back to the water, huh? Oh. And get re baptized all over again. Yeah. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Preacher, you come over here and beat us up. We've had a bad day. Let me tell you something. I thought about that when this service was going on and the spirit was a moving and Larry was up here sweating and a dancing. I thought I'd bet mama on. Now, I don't know how y'all believe now. Y'all can say what you want to about me. But wait till I leave. I believe mama was shouting all over the streets ago. I believe she was dancing all over the street ago. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we know her record. And your record goes with you. If you die lost, you're going to the devil's hell. But if you die filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to the, amen, heaven one of these days. We can't produce no fruit because we got a parasite on the inside of us. You see, the Bible says... That the Father is the is the root, and Jesus. Now I'm not separating anything. It's still one tree. It's still one tree. You ain't gonna have an apple tree that's got orange roots. Huh? You ain't gonna go dig up and, uh, a ginseng and get a May apple root. You gonna get a ginseng. That's what I'm talking about. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. If you're that easy confused, you need to go back and restudy. Amen. But the root and the tree and the branches have the, all the same sap. They all have the same sap in them. The sap that is in the root is the same sap that's in the branch. And the same sap that's in the root is the same sap that's in the fruit. For the tree cannot bring forth fruit if the root's no good. Amen. That's what's wrong with some of, some of us. We get rooted and grounded with the wrong thing. Amen. Yeah. We get rooted and, oh yeah, we've all done it. Yeah. We've all done it. You know what happens when you plant an apple tree next to a, a redwood tree? 
They'll pull up together, but their vines get intermixed with each other. God didn't intend on us to get our vines mixed up with anybody else. He's a drunk, but I like hanging out with him. Come on. Come on. Huh? Oh, yeah, they used to preach that you couldn't date anybody outside the faith. Still like it. Come on, man. Oh, yeah, man. Huh? Uh -huh. But now we let them mix up. Yes. And they can be anything that they want to be. It's their life. But what they don't understand is, what they don't understand is, all that mixing up that they do comes right into your home and it brings a parasite that will live among the fruit. Yeah. And it'll suck all the life out of you. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you're dead and rotten. It ain't no good for nothing. Okay. You can't do anything with rotten fruit. It produces gnats. Yeah. It produces gnats. You don't believe me? Let me tell you what to do. Go home and get you a plate of bananas. Don't peel them. Just wrap them up and tie the top up good and tight. And you leave them bananas on that plate under that cover and don't touch them. You know what's going to happen when you start shaking that plate? You're going to see gnats. Oh, yeah. And you'll say, how in the world did the gnats get in there? Uh, I'm going to tell you how they get in there. They was already in the fruit before you covered it. Amen. And if you're not covered by the blood, it will not remove the gnats in your life. He's more than just coming up here and coming a little bit and shaking a little bit and then being filled with covered with the blood. It's to have his name and to bear his name. You gotta get the blood covered if you don't want the fruit rotten. You know what happens when you get a bad apple? It ruins a whole bunch. Huh? And even the, and it, even if you get the bad apple out, it still leaves a funny taste in the rest of the apple. Come on. Come on. Huh? Am I right? Come on. But what we got to do is like Jesus said. He said he went to a certain vineyard. Yeah. Now, in case y'all don't know it, a vineyard is where they grow grapes. Yes. And they make wine out of grapes. Come on. And Jesus is there and he says, there's a fig tree right there among all the grapevines. And he said, this tree has not produced any fruit. Cut it down. Oh, Lord, I wonder how many times God said, just let him go. Just let him go. Uh -huh. But then he sees the blood and says, oh, we'll get him back. Come on. Huh? Yeah, come ain't on. none of y'all ever felt like God let you go? Come on. Huh? Oh, come man, you ain't come saved on. if you ain't ever felt like you're by yourself. Come on. Huh? You ain't saved if you ain't if you ain't never felt all alone, like nobody cares about you. But then you feel the you feel the Lord in the harvest just wrap his arms around you and you feel the presence of God in the air. Let it down and stop producing anything. But the Lord of the harvest says, "Wait a minute, Master." Uh, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, don't you? Wait a minute. Let me dig around it. Let me dig around it. You know what dung is? Uh, it comes out the other end of a horse. Uh, and it's called fertilizer. What he was saying was, Lord, don't give up on this tree just yet. Uh, you look at all my other growths. You look at all my other fruits. 
Don't you let this one now me. Let me thunder in it. Let me dig it in it. Let me water it. My God knows we never need a dig. And the water and the day is the day that we live in. Some folks don't want to be done around. Because they can't stand the smell. Yeah, all right. They can't stand the smell of the dung. But little do they know that it's the dung that's going to save the tree. Come on. Come on. Huh? Come on. My daddy's got a garden, and he gardens the same place for the past 50 years. Come on. Come on. And he said, son, my garden's not doing any good. I said, well, there's a guy up the road here who's got a horse. Let's put some dung on it. Come on. He said, Lord, have mercy. Said, your mommy will kill me if I put dung on that thing. <laughs> said, we won't even be able to sit on the front porch. I said, Daddy, do you want to sit on the front porch or you do you want to reap a harvest? He said, look out among the fields. They are white and ready to harvest. But pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth reapers. We're reapers. We're reapers in the house of God. Bless your name, Jesus. We're reapers in the house of God. But what are we reaping? Come on. There's a whole lot of Christians got the works of the flesh but not the fruit of the Spirit. We got a lot of tongue talkers that don't have the fruits of the Spirit. Now the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of receiving it is speaking with other tongues. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, you spoke in tongues. That's the evidence that you received it. Not for the believer, but for the unbeliever. Amen. Come on. Huh? Somebody say amen. amen. That's the evidence of you receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of you having it. Come on. Amen. Come on. There's no way possible for us to be filled with the Spirit of God and not produce the fruit of the Spirit. Maybe we ain't got what we say we got. Come on. Come on. Maybe all we got was a tongue. Come on. Uh, I've seen them smack them on the bottom lid and tell them to say Jesus and tell them to say everything. Yeah. Oh, when I was a little boy, they'd open your mouth and pour a bottle of oil down you. You either spoke in tongues or throwed up. One or the other. If you throwed up, they said you had a demon. Come on. People don't like this kind of preaching anymore. They got rotten fruit. Yeah. Come on, brother. Let me tell you what I done one time. Just got married. Just got settled down. I went up to my daddy's and my daddy was planting a garden and he planted corn. He said, son, take the rest of these seeds and plant them. Boy, I tell you what, I okay. Took them seeds home and I busted me up a piece of grain. And I planted them seeds just like he told me. And a week went by. Here come my corn. Just broken up through the ground. Now I planted them the same day Daddy planted his corn. I go up Daddy's after a couple weeks and my corn's only about that high. And I go up Daddy's and his is, oh man. His corn's high. You know, me high to 4th of July, you know, they say it produces good corn. Look here, my corn was like this, but his corn. And we planted the same corn on the same day. I said, Daddy, something happened to that corn by me hauling it down the road. <laughs> I thought I was going to get them little bitty ears of corn, you know, like you get on a salad bar. <laughs> Daddy said, son, 
Are you watering that corn? I said, every day, Daddy. He said, son, are you hoeing that corn? I said, well, I didn't know I had to. Come on, come on, come on. So he was hoeing his every day or every other day. But I wasn't hoeing mine. You see, when you hold something, what it does is it breaks up the fallow. Oh, yeah, I feel Come that on. It breaks up the fallow yes. ground. Yes. You know how it is when you're sitting in the church and the preacher preaches and you leave mad? He busted up your fallow ground. Yeah. 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 He busted up your fallow ground. Yeah. And when you bust up the fallow ground, you know what happens? That water I was dumping on that corn every day was just running off. But when I busted up that hard ground and dumped that water on, it is seeded down to the root toe. It gets one man to the root. And the next thing I know, my corn had been caught up with daddy's. And I got more corn that year than daddy did. I'm going to tell you something. If you're not willing to bust up your final ground, you will not produce anything for the kingdom of God. preachers people nowadays couldn't sit under the preaching we sit under they kill them they kill them dead they die I'm telling you all they want now is a pat on the back I'm going to tell you something a pat on the back don't make you produce fruit I don't know how many times I got off my seat and went home mad at the preacher. Yeah. Come on. Helps, brother. I'll pay tell me off on the way down the room. He was right. No, he wasn't. Yeah. You know what? Oh, don't act like y'all ain't never done. Come on. Come on. That's what's wrong with us now. All we are is a bunch of fruit sitting on a table that it can't be eaten. Yeah, man. Fake fruit. My granddaddy go over to granny's house and her granny's got a bowl of fruit on the table, been there for years, and nobody can eat it. <laughs> She'll say apple. I'm not getting an apple. <laughs> Come on. Well, it ain't. Come on. Come on. It's just fake. It can't do anything for you. You know what it's for? It looks. And hey, you got a lot of church folks like that, too. Amen. Oh, yeah. I've seen them with their hair dragged the ground, their dress dragged the ground, and hateful as an old buzzard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen them shout and speak in tongues, get the nerve out and see them, you go, hey. some advice. If the pastor comes to you when you're done and pats you on the back and rubs you on the head and says, man, you did a good job. I'm going to get you back. Don't never plan on going back there again. Amen. Come on, brother. That's good. Because you made him so mad he can't stand it. He's just trying to cover it up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is like them old tomatoes. The only way we can produce tomatoes is if a farmer drives a steak beside us and, pie and, pie and holds us up because we can't hold ourselves up anymore. Amen. Huh? Amen. We can't hold ourselves up because we're weighed down by the world and the things of the world and the lust of the world and the pride of life and all the things that the world produces. Tell you what I found out that the world will weigh you You won't produce anything. Right. Right, bro. If you go home and you plant flowers and you cover them up with mulch, they will not produce any flowers because you've blocked the sun out of their life. Come on. And some folks can't smell good because they're blocking themselves from the SON. Uh, 
me say this, and I'll sit down. All the fruit of the Spirit is in the seed of love. For God is love. And we ought to be rooted and grounded in, yeah, in God and in love. So if you're trying to tell me that you got faith and you ain't got no love, you're talking to the wrong man. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yeah. I know folks that's got, they say they got enough faith to, to bust a Hoover Dam. But they're hateful as all get out. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know where they got faith at? But their heart's far from it. If you get so upset when you go through the drive-thru at McDonald's because you didn't order pickles, I'm serious. Come on you get so upset because you got pickles on your hamburger. I ain't ordering pickles. You know what's wrong with us? We're spoiled. Amen. Amen. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. Now, mommy and daddy run through the drive through every day to feed their kids after school because they're too lazy to cook dinner. Come on. Why you ain't got gas money to make a church on Wednesday night? Hold your spirit all the way. It's in the Lord of God. He said that the elder women are to teach the younger women. You can't tell this young generation nothing. That's right. They got problems trying to figure out which bathroom to use. and say, take some of this fruit. It'll change your life. Yeah. Some of y'all eat it. 
but you wouldn't put it in your veins, would you? My wife can bake the prettiest cornbread you ever seen. She'll shake it in that iron skillet and flip it over and it'll fall right out on the plate. But it's got to have a fork under it or a spoon for some reason. She said so it don't sweat. And I could cut that cornbread up, but mm, God. So what would it be like if I went in there and cut it open and it was full of something that I didn't like? Come on. Come on. Huh? I hate mushrooms. I'd rather jump off a cliff to eat one of them things. <laughs> but you look here. What if I went home and I seen that pretty pan of cornbread golden brown on the bottom crust crunchy when you bite it. And I cut it open and it had mushrooms in the middle of it. Come on. I'd say, what in the world broke you, boy? <laughs> if God cut us open, what would he find on the inside of us? Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Huh? Come on. You can look the part. You can even act the part. Come on. But can you live the life? Yeah. Come on. Huh? Can you live the life? I'm telling you right now, when I got saved, I was a short squirm, tank top, snuff chewing. Come on. Long hair. Come on. Believe it or not, I had long hair. <laughs> But when I got, when I knelt down and prayed, something began to happen in my heart. Nobody said nothing to me. But I went outside one day, and it was like everybody was looking at me. Come on. It's the inside working on the outside. Yeah. Huh? I felt like somebody looked at me and said, man, I thought you got in church. What are you doing with them shorts on? Come on. Come on. Yeah. I went in a Baptist church the other night to go to a funeral. And you know what they had on the door? No hats, no shorts. What else was it? No drinks. No food and no drinks in the sanctuary. I said, shame on the apostolic church. Amen. Leave them alone. They'll be all right. Let me tell you something. You leave them alone for a little while. If they don't change, they ain't right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Uh, I'm telling you the truth. If you're a beer drinker and say you go to church, you're not right. Come on. Amen. Amen. I don't care if it does taste good with steak. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm right about it. We need to produce the fruit meat for repentance. Amen. Come on. Our fruit will bring repentance yes. to the altar. The greatest witness that you can be is to produce fruit. Amen. Amen. I want to be a fruitcake, y'all. Come on. Telling you the truth about it. They all wanted to be like him. 
But they didn't want to pay the price that it takes to be a Jesus man. Yeah. And it's a big price. It's a big price to bear that name. If you put that name on your car, you better live right. Yeah. If you put that name on your license plate, you better live right. Yeah. If you put that name on your forehead, oh my God, you better live right. Yes. And you better do it with all your heart, not just when you feel like it. Yeah. Come on, Brother Larry, I'm done. 